Welcome home. I'm so glad you decided to join us today for Church at Home, and I would love to extend a special welcome to anyone new to the family. Today, we are going to be talking about how God promises to indwell us. And if you would like to learn more or just let us know that you are here, text Hello Core to 474747 and we will get in touch with you. And if this is helpful to you, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons and ring the bell for notifications. Also, please go to our website, ionanetwork.org, where you can sign up for free devotionals, books, and so much more. We are a church that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus, and there are a lot of great things happening, but we will come back to them at the end. Right now, let's gather together for a time of praise and worship. Welcome to our house for Church at Home. My name is Anna and I'm one of the leaders here at Church at Home. My husband Greg and I are so excited for you to join us today in a new location. We decided to change things up this week and take from our kitchen. It brings us all closer and gives us a break from the usual. You may be like me and ready for a break from the craziness on the news and, and in our hearts. Someone recently posted, what a year this week has been. <laughs> Through it all, we know that God has been um, in control and has our days and moments under his control. And we can trust him to be the one who is near and takes care of us. 
Our hope is that this next 30 minutes will provide you a place of peace and stability. You know what I say if you're with me every week, set down the things that beep, chirp, or buzz at you. It's so important to take a break from that electronic technology. Take a deep breath and release the stress and craziness you've been holding in. Gather friends and or family around you or contact someone over the phone and watch with them. But let the words, the music, and the prayers encourage and strengthen your soul as we have church at home together. We begin with the words Jesus said. Love the Lord your God with your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and most important commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Lord have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord have mercy. Many religions throughout the world summarize their beliefs in a, a series of creeds. Christians through the ages have used a creed called the Apostles' Creed, and that summarizes our Christian beliefs. Please say it with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day He rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us, especially if this is your first time. Shoot us a text to 474747 with the word Hello Core" one word, to let us know that you're here. When you do that, a form will come to you with a place to ask questions. If there are any words that you don't understand, any questions about ideas you hear, please write them down and send us to you. We'd love to find a time to talk more deeply about what you hear. Now, we're going to listen to Pastor Stephen talk about the promise that God will indwell us with his presence. Listen with me. Welcome back to Church at Home. We're glad to have you, Stephen. And we kind of changed things up a little bit, getting closer to the holidays. Yeah, yeah, Seems yeah. It's like we nice. Should be in the kitchen. I, I don't know how much we can see, but we yeah, we're in the kitchen. Uh, I'm just looking for the cookies behind me. I don't see those, so maybe we'll have to change that next time. Yeah, it's exciting to be in a different part of your home. Uh, we continue with our series on God's promises, and today we're looking at that God indwells you, indwells in you. Yeah. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter 2, where the Apostle Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, mainly Gentile believers, those who are not Jewish and he's reminding them of their past, mm. where they came from. And then wow. he's going to uh, continue and he's going to, uh, they're going to be able to rest in a life that is indwelled with God. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to look at how that being indwelled with God means that we, in, we, are, we dwell in a community together. But I want to start us off with a, a quick story. Uh, and this is uh, a couple years ago, my son... Kai, we bought him a skateboard, and that skateboard came with the helmet and the pads, and it came with a video. And the video was a educational video from a famous skateboarder from, I remember him back in the 80s. His name is Steve Caballero. Mm -hmm. He was part of this skateboarding team, Powell Peralta. And we were watching the video, and as he was instructing, he brought his young son in to help uh, kids see another kid skating and learn how to skate. And as I listened to him and I saw him interacting with his son, I thought, there is something different about this guy. I wonder, I wonder if he's a Christian. So I got on the internet after the video and I looked it up. And in fact, he had become a Christian and he had been wow. a Christian for a while. And he, I, looked, I clicked on a little testimony of his life and he started out uh, as this incredible skateboarder uh, being sponsored at a young age and his life, someone came up to him and he, they said, you know, you kind of have a Zen feel to you. Uh -huh. And so he started looking into Zen, into Taoism, and he was really looking for peace. And what he found was is that when he ran into a situation uh, with someone that was close to him that broke him down, that his Zen life, his Taoism was really very self focused. Mm. And so he called his sister up and he said, what am I supposed to do here? I'm broken. And she said, you need to go to Jesus. Wow. 
And then, of course, going to Jesus, we know when you're a Christian, when you become a Christian, that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. And so that's what I was seeing. I was, you know, as my yeah. spirit testified to his spirit in right. a sense where I could see and it's like, this guy, I know why this sounds familiar because he's my brother. Yeah, He lives great. in California, but he is my brother in Christ. So we're going to dive in here uh, and we're going to look at three things. We're going to look at the, how Paul remembers a life without God dwelling. And then we're going to look at how Paul points us to rest in a life with God dwelling in you. And finally, how we reside in a community where the Spirit dwells. So maybe you can start us off and if you don't mind reading verses uh, 11 and 12. In Ephesians? Yes, chapter Ephesians one. chapter 1. Did I say, I may have said chapter 2 starting off. Ephesians chapter 1, <laughs> verses 11 and uh, 12. No, we are in Ephesians chapter 2. Chapter 2, verse 11 <laughs> and 12. Yeah, that's right. Thanks. Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Thanks, Greg. So we're seeing some particular points as to what it looked like for these Gentile believers uh, who, before they were believers in Christ, what it looked like, and they were separated from Christ. They had no hope, and they were alienated from God's people. And what that meant was is not only were they uh, uh, separated from God, because they had no relationship. These were, they were in first century Christianity where what they experienced were Israelites, Jewish people, and who were saying, look, if you want to know God, you have to be Jewish. But Paul's getting ready to point them to the fact that that is not the case. Now that was the case if we read the Old Testament, that right. those were God's people, that the nation of Israel was God's people, but that's no longer. That is abolished. Now it is the church, yeah. and it's the worldwide church through Jesus Christ. And so they had no hope. It reminds me of a story of when I was a, a kid. I was in the Boy Scouts. We went on a camping trip, and you know, you go down to the canteen to buy candy bars and stuff like that. And after I bought these candy bars, all my buddies had gone up the hill, and they had the flashlights. So I went up the hill. I mean, you can imagine, we're, we're not in a, in a lit place at all. It oh, is wow. completely dark, and I'm going up a hill, gravel hill. I fall, I bust my knee, I'm feeling afraid. Yeah. I mean, that was no hope as I'm going right. up the hill. But what we're going to see that Paul points us to is that although before we were separated with no hope, we were in the dark, we were going uphill, tripping and falling, that Christ is the light. And he's going to point us to that here. And as we see, we're going to rest. So we looked at how beforehand that we remembered a life without God. Now we're going to be able to rest yeah. in a life that is indwelled with the Spirit. And so as we continue, if you don't mind reading verses uh, 13 through 16. You got it. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For He Himself is our peace, who has made us both one and has broken down in His flesh the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing the law of commandments expressed in ordinances that He might create in Himself one new man in the place of the two, mm -hmm. so making peace, and might reconcile us both to God in one body through the cross, thereby killing the hostility. Mm, go ahead and do 17 and 18 if you don't mind, please. And he came and preached peace to you who are far off and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access in one spirit to the Father. This is a beautiful picture of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine, Greg, if you grew up in a culture. So there were only two sets of people. You were either Jewish or you were a Gentile. It was Jewish and everything else was Gentile. Yeah. And you weren't allowed to be part of this particular group of godly people that He had chosen, that God has chosen. But now He makes a new way. He makes a new way to live, which is, 
you know, a, a, a breath of fresh air. Yeah. He says that we were, that, that the Gentiles were far off, and that's us as well, far off from God. Mm -hmm. Not only were they far off from God, but they were far off from having relationship with the Jewish community. I mean, even at the temple, if uh, you were a Gentile during any feasts or anything of that nature, you were beyond the nosebleeds. Yeah. And there was a sign on the wall that said, not you'll be kicked out of the stadium if you go past this area, but you'll be executed if wow. you go yeah. past this area. That's kind so, of serious. Yeah, that's so serious. Yeah. You won't find that in any of the sporting events. No, no. But just imagine, they were considered the low of the low. Yeah. If they, were, they weren't allowed in because they did not have the same relationship with God. Yeah. But now, Jesus, we see through the blood of Christ that they have a relationship with God through yeah. Jesus Christ. And that's what we're looking at, that He has broken down this spiritual dividing wall yeah. between us and God. And He's also broken down literally the wall <laughs> that separated them and the Jewish people. So no right. longer are they alienated from one another, but they're actually brothers and sisters wow. because of Christ. Because He says the, set, the one Spirit, He points them to the one Spirit that dwells in them. Going back to our story at the beginning, yeah. you know, the one spirit. I, I, you know, there are other times, and I bet others can think of these times where they've run into someone. You think, I think they're a Christian. Yeah. You know, you just know by the way that they talk, the way they think. And I want to point out that he also says that because of Jesus, they have this new relationship. There's one new man created. What he's saying is he's saying instead of there being Jew and Gentile, there's just one church mm. under Christ, and He has abolished the law. Now, I think it's important to pause here because uh, abolishing the law can be read in some ways that it's not meant to be read. And abolishing the law does not mean that the moral code that we are to follow has been abolished and we can live any way that we want to. What it's saying is, is that the requirement to the ceremonial requirements, the uh, requirement to obey the law to get to God is abolished. Yeah. That it's through faith in Jesus Christ, and that is the only way that we have a relationship with God. We now have access. We now have, we've come under together, we have access. Yeah. It's not the ceremonial laws. When we moved to uh, South Carolina here in the Myrtle Beach area, we realized that there are two teams. There's Clemson and there's South Carolina. Clemson and South Carolina, you kind of have to choose one or the other. Yeah. I mean, it would be like if there was, if Clemson and South Carolina, if all of a sudden they decided, you know what, we're going to form one school under one banner. It's like, what? We yeah. were enemies. <laughs> we're enemies. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Right. But that's it what it would miracle, be like. It would right? take them. Amen. There, there you go, go, brother. It would take a. It would take a miracle, and so the, the application for us is that this helps divisions cease. Mm -hmm. So not only do we see our past and say the only thing that rescued me was Jesus. Any person, whether it's not my good works, not my ceremonial laws, not that I go to this Bible study or that Bible study. Now, those are good. Go to core groups. We, we want that to happen. Right. That's how you grow. But that is not what rescues you. And so it allows me to say, you know what? It is a miracle mm -hmm. that I know Jesus. Yeah. It is a miracle that I know Jesus. So I have no right to look down on another brother or sister in Christ and say, ah, <laughs> they should do it a, a different way. Yeah. You know, they should do it a different way. And so it really helps um, make us right-sized, so to speak. And as, he can, as Paul continues and as he points to Jesus above all things, we're going to see that we, now that we were under one head, reside in a community where Christ dwells. Mm -hmm. It goes, he goes from the individual to the body yeah. of Christ. And if you could just read the rest of that, excuse me, from 19 to 22. So then, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, mm. built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole structure being joined together, grows into a holy temple 
in the Lord. In him, you also are being built mm. together into a dwelling place for mm. God by the Spirit. Mm. That's such good news. So we see that we reside in a community where Christ dwells. That he again points out that there's no long, we're no longer strangers. We're no longer aliens. We're no longer apart from God. We're no longer apart from the community of God. But because of Christ, we have been brought in yeah. to a new community where He dwells. And He uses this great image of, a, a, of building. It's, and we are built on yeah. the, the apostles, on the prophets, and Jesus is the cornerstone. John Stott said that uh, every time someone becomes a Christian, it's like a new block coming wow. into the building yeah. Yeah. and being that. part of that. Uh, and we're built together into this dwelling place for God by the Spirit. Mm. I mean, you can just, you know, when we are in church or even right here, you know, if we're with our family or maybe you're watching right now and you can think, you know, just think about those you know who know Christ. And they are part of that building. When we're sitting in church, if we kind of look around, it's like, you are part of, this is the building yeah. right here where we dwell together. And we are meant to function in unity. Mm. And that's why it's so important that Paul points us to looking at how far Jesus has rescued us. Yeah. And next we have this willingness. There's this willingness to follow the Spirit that the Spirit puts in us. Yeah. And what that looks like is to say, look, God, your will be done. Convict me where I need convicting to love my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Comfort me where I need comfort. Lord, how do I weep with those who weep? Mm -hmm. How do I rejoice with those who rejoice? Um, you know, as, as Christians, it's just a different category that people see. You know, we can be the first to repent, the first to confess. Yeah. The first to weep over sin. Mm -hmm. The first to forgive. Yeah. And it's like, hold on, that doesn't make sense. You're a lot different than you used to be. Mm -hmm. Just like at the beginning of our story. And so that's where we want to point today is that God in, dwells in us. Yeah. And He does so in a community. So it allows us in freedom mm -hmm. to live that out. Wow, love it. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Stephen. What a comfort to know that God is near and wants to intimately know us. If you've never responded to God or you've not felt Him indwell you, please use the feedback form to reach out and we will contact you to talk further. In response to the sermon, we need to confess areas where we struggle with earthly areas of idols that have crept in, times that we've lied, been angry, spoken wrongly, I want to invite you to take a minute and let's just have some silence to speak and confess those things to God privately. Almighty God, God creator, creator of all, you marvelously made us in your image, but we have corrupted ourselves and damaged your likeness by rejecting your love and hurting our neighbors. We have done wrong and neglected to do right. We are sincerely sorry and heartily repent of our sins. Cleanse us and forgive us by the sacrifice of your Son. Remake us and lead us by your Spirit, the Comforter. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, whose steadfast love is as great as the heavens are high above the earth, remove your sins from you as far as the east is from the west. Strengthen your life in his kingdom and keep you upright to the last day through Jesus Christ our merciful High Priest. Amen. I want you to know that God loves you and meets you no matter how far away you feel today with words of welcome. Listen to these welcoming words of Jesus to all who turn to Him. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Those words remind us that we are God's chosen people. 
He loves you and calls you to put your eyes on Him. He's the only one who can give you rest and peace. So we say to each other, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. As we say the word peace, we realize that the world is greatly lacking in peace right now. We hear of bad news everywhere. Our hearts are heavy until we remember that we can run to a God who is bigger than all of this. We can turn to him in prayer and he both listens and answers our prayers. Join us in praying together. Lord, we pray that you would lead the nations of the world in the ways of peace. Guide their leaders in wisdom and truth for the safety and good of all. Lord Jesus, do be with the leaders of nations throughout the world. We pray for America often, but we also want to pray for every nation that is in this whole world. Every people group, every um, uh, language and tongue and tribe throughout all the world, that they would come to a knowledge of you and that you would bring peace throughout this whole world. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Pour out on your whole church the spirit of unity and truth. May all who confess your holy name agree in the truth of your word, live in loving unity, and serve you with holy and righteous lives. Lord, I pray at this time while we're um, challenged by what we hear about in the world, Lord, that we would not just look outside of ourselves, but that we would look inside, that we would see the areas where we are untruthful, the areas where we um, desire what others have, the areas where we don't serve you and don't observe your Sabbath, don't honor you with our lives. Mm -hmm. Lord, as a church, I pray that you would start with each one of us, that we would take that time to turn to you, that you would cleanse our hearts, and that as a cleansed church, we can be a strong light for the world. Together, Father, mm -hmm. hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through, through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord, comfort and sustain everyone who in this fleeting life is in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other distress. I want to invite you to pray for those people that are on your mind and on your heart right now. Together, Father, Father hear, hear our, our prayer, prayer through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Now let us pray together as our Savior Christ has taught us in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father, who Lord art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the Holy Trinity make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. You stood before creation, eternity. So now to stand You stood before my failure Carried the cross for my shame My sin weighed upon your shoulders My soul now to stand So what can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, oh God Completely to you So I'll walk upon salvation the spirit alive in me my life to declare your promise my soul now to stand so what can I say what can I
of the one who gave it all. I'll stand my soul on to you, surrendered all I am is yours. So I'll stand with arms high and heart up and then in all of the one who gave it all. So long to you surrendered all I am is yours 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 Thank you so much for joining us today. I mentioned earlier that we are a community that seeks to transform lives with the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. And as we close, I would like to share a few great ways to connect into our family. If you are interested in connecting with us in any of these ways or learning more, please text HELLO CORE to 474747 and we will connect with you. Our core groups are continuing to grow and reach many different people in different ways. These groups really try to dive deep together, and we would love to find the right group for you. We would love for your help as part of our drive through nativity, and we have plenty of room for all gifts and talents, from constructing to acting to traffic control. And even if you don't have the time or ability to help out, we would love for you to come on December 12th and 13th to celebrate the wondrous story of Christmas. Thank you so much for taking this time to join us. And we look forward to seeing you again next week.